Hello and welcome, this is Roofmonger, and this is my beginner's guide to Mortal Kombat 11. So this video is very much intended for folks that are just either totally not familiar with Mortal Kombat at all, or only just kind of have a passing familiarity. So I'm just going to be going over a lot of the basic concepts of what makes Mortal Kombat 11 work, uh, versus say any other fighting game. Uh, so say if you play Dragon Ball Fighters before, or if you played Street Fighter before, but you never really touched MK, hopefully this guy can get you ready and get to some kind of fighting shape. Also, to quickly note, I do have a companion guide to this for some of the more advanced mechanics in the game, uh, 5 Essential Tips for Mortal Kombat 11, and you'll find that video at the end of this video if you would care to check that. So let's just start with the absolute basics here before anything else. So uh, as far as attacks goes, this is a 4 button game. Uh, we have here Front Punch, which we call 1, Back Punch, which we call 2, Front Kick, which we call 3, and Back Kick, which we call 4. Uh, you know, considering, you know, different uh, systems have different things, like if I'm on PlayStation, it could be uh, Square is 1, but if you're on Xbox, it could be X is 1, right? So we use 1, 2, 3, 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, front punch, back punch, front kick, back kick, just to kind of clear up any misconception between versions of the game. If you're on Xbox, or PS4, if you're on PC, or whatever, right? Uh, on top of that, obviously, blocking is a very big deal in Mortal Kombat, so that has its own dedicated button. And on top of that, we can do some other things here. So, if we hit uh, 1 and 3 together, that is a throw. And you can aim which way here. So if you hold forward and throw, then you'll throw them in front of you. If you hold backwards and throw, then you'll throw them in back of you. 1 and 2 together is an interactable button. So you can use stuff in the background of the stage. Uh, this is usually, if you're playing a controller, uh, set to a shortcut and more preferable because sometimes it might be a little bit hard to hit 1 and 2 together. And we also have a shortcut for grab too as well. Uh, there's a lot of shortcuts. And that's basically the long and short of it. As you can see here, three and four together is the stance switch, which also has a shortcut. And those are the basic buttons of Mortal Kombat 11. Now on top of the basic attacks here, uh, all sorts of combinations of buttons on a basic attack will provide different outcomes. So here's a couple universal ones. Down two is always gonna be an uppercut. No matter what character you are, down two is always an uppercut. Generally, for the most part, uppercuts are very high damaging single strike moves always do 14% damage and it's varying character to character on their usefulness but for the most part it's kind of a universal anti-air so if you want to jump in and be crazy and just jump all the time for the most part most characters uh, uppercuts are very suited to dealing with that now also on the universal stuff here back and four is pretty much universally a sweep so this will be a ranged attack here uh, you know it'll usually have a little more range than like point blank and it'll hit the fo low and you can go and make sure you know just trip them up and then you know advance on them as they're getting up and get some sort of pressure now past those two uh buttons get a little bit you know character specific right so uh someone's forward one here rain's forward one he summons a big old stick right and it's obviously not gonna be the case for every character. So like uh, for him, that's forward one, that's forward two. These are obviously it's forward four. These are all lightning based moves. That's gonna be very kind of specific to Raiden. So everyone else, uh, directions and buttons kind of do different things. For the most part, there is no diagonal presses in this game. There are a handful and they are quite rare, but for the most part, the cardinal directions of up, down, left, right, those are the only ones the game for the most part cares about. And of course, character to character different, and there's special moves, right? So every character has their own special moves, all unique to them, they all do different things, and they kind of are the strengths of the character and generally the what you want to play around, right? So Raiden, classically, he can shoot lightning, he can teleport, and he has the Superman attack, right? And some characters have multiple modular modes, like for Raiden for the Superman attack, you can hold it, as you can see there. So you can hold it a little bit and delay it to mess people out, and on top of holding it, you're also able to cancel out of it. And see here, it takes out one of your meters. Now, once again, for the meters, please check the five essential tips guide at the end of the video as I covered in great detail there. But as you can see here, uh, just some basic moves. And obviously, you know, a lot of characters have multiple moves. That's not just it, uh, what I just showed you. But uh, special moves are basically the heart and soul of the character and define what their play style is going to be. And the motions are different character to character. Uh, so those you'll have to play around and figure out yourself. As far as basic level attack stuff too, since we mentioned a lot of the ground stuff, let's talk about jumping. Obviously jumping is a very big part of every fighting game. Every character, with some rare exceptions, has three basic jumping attacks. Jumping one, your front punch here, is usually uh, more of an air to an air vibe of an attack, like meant to meet people in the air and then you can follow up and beat them in the air. Jumping two, your back punch, for the most part it's usually angled more to like kind of jump in and hit a grounded foe. Uh, and also two note here, 
The jumping one almost always does less damage than the jumping two. So if you're trying to jump at someone and get more damage, jumping two will do the most damage of all of them. Now, that set, jumping three and four, those are always the same button here, the kicks. They do the most damage of all of them, but they will always knock the foe down. So in this specific situation, I could do a jumping two and go right into a combo and the enemy is standing. But if I try to do this here, I might miss. So jumping two is, or sorry, jumping kicks are for the most part meant to get damage. And the jumping punches are more to either meet people air to air or get your combo stuff. Now, don't get me wrong. You can absolutely get your air kick here and, like, you know, follow up and hit people, right? Depending on your buttons here, depending on, like, that kind of stuff. That's totally doable. Uh, but generally speaking, in this game, jump punches are more suited to a uh, jumping attack into a full combo. Also, keep in mind, too, just like many characters here with special moves, a lot of characters have special moves in the air. So now we've kind of went over a lot of the control basics, so let's talk about the basics of what the moves all mean. So obviously, uh, you can do all your attacks and all that kind of fun stuff, but uh, there's uh, four categories of attacks, and for Mortal Kombat 11, this is super, super, super critical to know. So we have here highs, and a lot of the fastest attacks in the games are going to be highs. We have mids, we have lows, and we have overheads. So... The basics of that are this, a high attack, once again, usually speaking, uh, a lot of the best moves start off at high, but there's a price to pay. So, if the enemy is ducking, as you can see here, the high will not connect, no matter what. So that is kind of the price to pay for uh, me having you know, a good move, usually a lot of combo starters are highs, a lot of good string starters are high, so that's kind of the price to pay here. Uh, but generally speaking, for the most part, highs tend to lead a lot of the best damage. They tend to be some of the fastest attacks in the games. So that is the trade-off. Now, mids. Mids don't care if you're ducking. So if you're just ducking here, try to avoid the high, yeah, it ain't going to work in your favor. You're going to get smacked by that mid. Now, conversely, lows also can hit people ducking. And the big difference between a mid and a high is this. So if we have the enemy blocking here, and actually we'll set them to stand block again here. So, a mid can be blocked while standing or crouching. It does not matter. You can block them either way. So, it doesn't matter how a mid's always going to get blocked. But you cannot just raw duck it. A low, however, must be crouch blocked. So, if the enemy is stand blocking, the low will hit them. Conversely, overheads must only be stand blocked. So, if you are crouching... If you are crouching at all, you will get smacked by the overhead. So lows and overheads are kind of, if you want to put it one way, the coin flip of Mortal Kombat. And a lot of situations and a lot of characters, uh, traditionally in Mortal Kombat games, really want to force you into overhead low situations to make you guess. Now, a very big thing to note here about high specifically, going back. So uh, overheads beat ducking, lows beat standing, and mids, well, they don't really beat anything, but they can stop you if you're just crouching, right? Versus the highs... Uh, severely struggle to hit anybody while they're crouching. Now, if you happen to be holding block while you are crouching, however, if you're holding block while you're crouching, it kind of raises your profile a little bit, and all of a sudden, you will have to block the high. Like, uh, is here, like, you're not taking, you know, it's not hitting you clean, right? But it raises your profile up while you're doing it, and all of a sudden, highs can connect where they could not before. So keep that in mind for the purposes of uh, chip damage, because once again here, you do lose life here every time you block a move. Uh, but a lot of highs uh, become a lot more valuable uh, when you're blocking. So the trick is basically to know when not to do it. Uh, when to uh, block and crouch at the same time here, and when just crouch and let the attack go clear over your head. For example, if we have this attack here, we're going to do this. And let's see what happens here. What kind of punish can they get if they let uh, go of block and just, you know, try not to defend themselves knowing the high is going to happen and go clear over their heads? Well, then something like this might happen. And then, ow, that looks like that hurts, right? And that can go to an entire combo situation, all that kind of fun stuff. All because they let the high go clear over the heads and they get a big hit from it. Now, in this game, we have a thing called amplifying moves. You also might hear this be called meter burn moves or EX moves if you come from other games. So, what is amplifying a move? Well, let's take Raiden here as we're just using him for all of our examples. So, his lightning toss here. It's a big old high. And as we went over in that last section here, well, if it's a high, then hey, you know, we can just duck it. Easy peasy. Okay, well, I guess Raiden can't get you. It's over. It's done. Well, except for this. So... <laughs> As you can see there, 
Uh, we are now hitting them. So as you can see at the bottom here, right by Rain here, down to his side here, there's two bars here. We have the bar that goes up and the bar that goes down across. And the bar that goes across, we can spend one unit of it and we can then amplify a move. So this is your meter resource. And this meter does come by uh, back by itself in this game. Unlike other fighting games, you don't have to hit people to build it up. Uh, it will come back by itself, so don't be scared to spend the bar is what I'm trying to tell you. And this works for a lot of style of uh, moves here. So once again, using Raiden, we have our Superman. And Superman, you know, does all right damage. But if we amplify it, all of a sudden, we get a big old dunk and we get more damage. That's pretty cool. And stuff like this. Uh, we have Storm Cell. So Storm Cell is a nice little attack here. And if we amplify it... Oh, well, they're shocked. And what can we do while they're shocked? Well, what we can do is get combos. So amplifying moves is very, very powerful for every character in the game. Every character, you will want to be doing this. Uh, and everyone has different moves. So Azir uh, turns uh, lightning into a thing you can't crouch. Also, self combos with itself. Really cool. Uh, Superman gets more damage. That's really cool. And also a little bit more carry to the corner. And the cor corner is where you, you know, really beat people up real bad. And stuff like this where it turns the basic move and a single hit into a move that can get you full combos. So yes, amplifying your moves is very, very important. And, uh, when you are playing the game here, you can hit start anytime. Go to your move list here. See if we can move around here. And all your special moves. You can just see them all right here. Every special move that you can amplify and spend your bar on, it'll say in here. And it'll usually give you a bit of uh, data here, the numbers and all that kind of stuff here. So we can amplify Lightning Bolt. We can also amplify Lightning Strike. So that is this guy right here. And if we amplify it, I see here it gets hit by two Lightning Bolts. So if you just go to the move list, every single move you're allowed to amplify, it will give you all the info you need. And including here, like... Uh, as we went over earlier on Electric Fly, showing off uh, special moves. Uh, there's, uh, there's a bit more to it than just, you know, can you uh, amplify it or not. Uh, has some other things. So all your information will be told to you here. Now, speaking of that move list we just went through here, uh, this will teach you everything you need to know about your character. There is also character tutorials. Please check those out. Those are a big help. Uh, but if you're just looking for some more basic info, like... As you would expect, all the moves are here, right? It teaches you all the moves. That's kind of the base level, what you should know, right? But it also teaches you quite a bit more than the average fighting game pause menu, just looking through the moves, right? So here we are, just stand one here, your basic jab, and we know all the numbers. Uh, we know the exact amount of damage, the exact amount of block damage here, the amount of damage it does on a flawless block, which is kind of like a very timed perfectly block. We know what's a high, starts up in 7 frames, 2 active frames, 19 frames recovery, 11 frames cancel advantage, 15 frames hit advantage, 4, uh, negative 4 on block, negative 4 on flawless block. That's a lot to know about a single move, right? And we got this for every single move here in, uh, for the character. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the frame data, just as a quick, uh, guide here uh for startup lower numbers are better active means basically how long is the move out for how many frames of animation this is a 60 frames of animation game so how long is it just out there for so in this case it'd be two frames the recovery is how many frames of that 60 frames per second does it take to recover from the move uh stuff like hit advantage here says 15 okay so we have 15 frames of advantage here we recover 15 frames faster than the enemy will recover from this move Stuff like negative on block is, if a move is blocked, obviously uh, it is quote unquote not your turn anymore. So it tells you how negative is. Uh, generally speaking, anything uh, with very rare exception, anything negative seven or under is safe on block. And if you get into like the higher numbers here, like say uh, we have, uh, let's pick here, where is Electrify? So that's negative 27 on block. So if it's negative 27, basically means the enemy can get a full combo on you if they block the move. So the more the negative is, the worse. And some moves happen to be plus on block. Very rare, not too many. But if you hit the move and they block it, you still have some manner of frame advantage over them. These are all the kind of things you can learn. Also, besides just the frame data and you know, all the information damage, uh, attack heights, all that kind of stuff, uh, you'll also learn stuff like this. So, so if we go to basic attacks... Uh, you'll also get additional properties, like say uh, we have our getup attacks here. We know this one's invulnerable, for example, right? It'll give you other little details. Stuff like the throws. As you see here, well, 
we have our differences here, but one has an extra word. What is that? Well, it has a crushing blow. Crushing blows are basically kind of super amplified versions of attack that get a lot of extra bonus goodies. And you can learn just by going through your move list, not only what are your crushing blows, and it'll tell you exactly how to get the requirement for them. So this one here triggers if the combo attack is a punish. So that is one, two, one. So let's just check that out real quick. So here's one, two, one as it stands. Looks fine, looks normal, right? Now, let's try that as the punish like it asked. Oh, all of a sudden you see here, a uh, much more devastating attack, both in terms of damage and, you know, just the looks, right? 280 damage, that would be 28%, as all characters have 1,000 health in this game. Now, besides all just the basic mechanic stuff here, uh, just to go over quickly uh, the game modes here, you know, you have your story, Towers of Time, uh, that's kind of single player versus uh, computer battles that have all sorts of crazy gimmicks attached to them, both for you and the enemy, Classic Towers is like classic early experience, Crypts where you unlock a lot of stuff here, uh, so fighting, obviously, it's uh, what you expect here, so local one-on-one -on -one tournament uh, is basically... Only the tournament variations allowed, uh, no gimmickry, only what's uh, considered allowed for a tournament will be allowed in this mode. Uh, you can fight versus uh, computers or have computers fight for you, that is another option. And online mode, all that kind of stuff. Customize, now I want to go over this real quick here. Um, I've mentioned this in another video, but it really bears repeating, especially in this is a beginner's guide. So when you go to custom, uh, let's pick, uh, well here. We've been using rain the whole time, so let's just keep going with rain, right? We're going to create a new variation. You can do all this cool stuff, pick your icons, name your variation, all that fun stuff. That's great. Uh, you can dress up whatever you want. That's great. Uh, you can do whatever you want, right? But uh, when it comes to the abilities, so when you pick your abilities, you can pick, you know, and choose whatever you want. That's great. Keep in mind, if you're looking to play seriously, uh, click here. We have the thing that says use a preset. Uh, go to the presets here, and you see there's quite a few, but two of them have trophies. So the trophies ones are the ones that are the tournament variations. So these are the ones that are only allowed in ranked online play and in offline tournaments. So if you're looking to get serious, these are the ones you want to learn. So you can just set your preset, that's great. Uh, save your guy, you're all done, you're all good, that's all you need to know. Uh, but just keep that in mind, please. Now, another very important traditional part of Mortal Kombat is the stages, because the stages are more than just, you know, you know the window dressing right so the stage you pick absolutely matters every stage has different interactables so when you're playing this game it will absolutely behoove you not to only learn the character you pick which obviously is super 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 important but also the stage you're on so say in this specific stage i picked the stage for a reason the stage right here in this corner we got a happy little grab bag of stuff here so we have that it gives us combos we got that which freeze which also gives us combos uh, and we have a third one here, which is, uh, the Cyrax bomb, and that explodes. So, stuff like that. If I'm well aware, I haven't back to the corner, it's not all gun, uh, there's, you know, it's not game over for me, right? I now have a very powerful tool to use that my back's to the corner, and every stage has this kind of stuff here. Uh, it could be stuff that you can use to, uh, hit your foe over the head, it could be stuff that counts as a throw, it could be stuff that gets you out of the corner, you can jump off the wall. Learning the stage in Mortal Kombat is just as important as learning your character. So now let's talk about a very important part of any fighting game really, but obviously equally important in Mortal Kombat 11 is combos. So what is combo structure like? You know, how does combo works and you know, all that kind of stuff. And well, the first big part of combos is, you know, your combo attacks here. This is what we call strings. So all these buttons linked together become a string. Now one very incredible and important thing to know about Mortal Kombat is unlike say Street Fighter where you just input the buttons and like you know one at a time uh, for a lot of these strings of these moves here once again here and we'll just say we'll start a couple of these here a lot of these strings you for lack of a better more elegant term you pre-dial them in a lot here so this string right here does have an ender that's it that's the entirety of the string right so the back one two here the back front punch and rear punch I want to enter those very quickly. As you can see on the left side of my screen, it has my button inputs. You can see all that kind of stuff. So I enter those very quickly. I'm not waiting to see if the first one hits. I'm entering them both right away. As you see here, it'll come out by its own. And including if I whiff the attack, if I miss, it's gonna come out, right? And the follow up here, and here I'll start that one here just for completion's sake here. So the follow up here is back one, two, 
and one three together so you can see that as uh, square next together this is power discharge so I want to enter these two quickly and only then if I see these hit do I then follow up here so I can tell if the enemy blocks I do nothing and if the enemy if it hits I can do something so that's where a lot of like uh, combo structure is is doing the early part of your string and then seeing if it hits or not and then going into your combo now a very big part of Mortal Kombat is the launcher so as we went over when we're talking about special moves we showed Raiden has a launcher here this is his amplified spark cell move so that move will launch and we can get a combo from it as we see here so now as we can put uh, our moves together here so let's use that back one two again here so we can use back one two into that spark cell into keeping a combo going so that'll be very important for getting combo and combo damage now as we said earlier it's best to pre-dial your thing and wait and see if you can get your hit or not so right now the enemy is set to randomly block sometimes they will block sometimes they will not so what we want to do here is we're going to do that back one two move we kept using here. And if they block it, then hey, we'll just stop right there. We're not going to do anything. And if we see it hit, then we'll go right into our combo. So they blocked it that time, not touching anything. Oh, I saw the hit. Combo time. And go from there, right? So that's very important. Now, different characters have all sorts of different kind of launchers here. Uh, some characters, they can launch with their basic moveset. They can just do, uh, once again here, one of their many strings here. One of these could be a launcher. Uh, for some characters, they need special moves. And for some characters, they need to amplify their special moves to get any kind of launcher. It's going to be different character to character. Some characters are better at juggle combos than others, and some are not. So then, with that all that said here, let's look at a more fully-fledged combo. So we'll use a jump-in attack as well, just to get some extra damage. And see there? So we did 306 damage out of 1,000, so that's roughly 30%. So that's the kind of stuff we're looking for here uh, when it comes to basic combo structure. Now, another thing to note, another thing to note here. The more hits you do in succession, you will do less damage. That is what we call combo scaling. So as you see here, the second hit does 28.5 damage. Yet if it hit by itself, it does 30. So each successive hit will do less and less and less damage. So generally speaking, it's better to get your big hits early in. And if you're going to do a lot of multiple hits, uh, it's better to kind of leave it towards the end of the combo when the combo scaling is already kind of done a lot of its damage in terms of, you know, lowering your overall damage. Uh, sometimes a combo with less hits but with more bigger hits will do more damage than a combo with many smaller hits. Also, in this game, the more the enemy is hit in the air, the faster they will fall to the ground. So here we are in the corner now. So I obviously can't keep that up forever, right? So I can hit them with a couple of my down one attacks here, my little jab. But eventually, the more I do it, the faster and faster they're going to fall to the ground. So I can't keep it up forever. Because if they didn't fall to the ground any faster, I could literally just keep them there forever. Which obviously, that's no good for nobody. So when you do combos, keep in mind, more hits will mean each hit does less success of damage. And the more times you hit the enemy while they're in the air, they will fall to the ground faster and faster in the end. So yeah, that's just a lot of the basics of Mortal Kombat. There's a lot to talk about. Uh, there's so many small little mechanics. Once again, uh, please check the five essential tips guide at the end of the video. There's a lot more discussion there about stuff. And check the channel for a lot more because there's so much to cover uh, more than I can even just do in this one video. Uh, but if you're just uh, either new to Mortal Kombat in general, new to fighting games in general, or any of that kind of stuff, I hope I showed you kind of the basics of how the game works, just the kind of combat flow. Uh, once again, it's always about fighting for positioning, doing your kind of stuff. If they're trying to hit you with fireballs, you want to get in. Uh, if they want to get in, then maybe you want to try to hit them with fireballs. You know, always do what your opponent doesn't want you to do and never let them do what you don't want them to do right uh so yeah that's basically this video so uh for everyone watching hey uh please subscribe to the channel if you're interested in this kind of stuff here there's gonna be tons of mortal Kombat. i also cover other fighting games you know like dragon ball fighters all that kind of stuff uh so subscribe if you like this kind of stuff because there's tons here and there's tons more coming anyways that's it for this video so thank you very much for watching i hope this video has found you well go out and play some mortal Kombat.